this to this. So that's a lot more finger friendly. And what's not, you know, so we've got some nice CSS, obviously. Um, but what's not immediately apparent is that JQ Touch is really smart about um, the setup. So it knows that, for example, if you have a rounded list like this, and these are um, link tags, that when I tap on it, I want to slide left. So I've done absolutely no JavaScripting, really. I've just included a couple of files, and now it just automatically knows that a rounded list should slide like that. History works automatically. You can slide back. You can slide in other directions. This is a form. You can cancel. You don't have tons of time to go through this code, but you'll be able to download it later. It's, it's extremely easy to get started with JQ Touch. You just write your HTML the way you always do, and then slap JQ Touch in there, and then you can start building on top of that. Very easy. In the interest of full disclosure, I'm the maintainer of the JQ Touch library now, so don't take my word for it. You should try out JQ Touch, try out IUI. Um, there's some other ones, iWebKit, I think. So give them all a try and uh, see what you think. Sencha Touch actually is a, if you really want to go nuts and, and build for tablets as well, Sencha Touch is extremely powerful. Um, and it's a pure HTML, CSS, JavaScript approach that will run equally well on a desktop, mobile browser, tablet, or, or all the way down to um, a small size smartphone. So if I jump back to the slides. I want to talk about something that is kind of becoming popular, which are hybrid apps. So the, the concept of native and web that I defined earlier, I sort of took pains to say the traditional definition of native and the traditional definition of web, of web apps. But these terms are starting to blur because a lot of native apps incorporate significant amount of HTML. And a lot of web apps now can be just the, uh, a full-formed web app can be included as a native app, or wrapped as a native app. So all of your application code is really just a local web app. And PhoneGap allows you to do this. It's one option, there are others, but PhoneGap I think is by far the most mature. So what PhoneGap is, it's an open source collection of projects. It's created by uh, uh, a company called Natobi up in Vancouver. And it's basically a native app wrapper for all of the major platforms. And what you can do with it, in a nutshell, is take a web app, like the one that we just looked at, that little sort of trivial app that I demonstrated, and you just grab all of the files, kind of like your web root directory, and you drop it inside of the iPhone project in a www directory, you drop it inside of an Android project, you drop it inside of a Windows phone project. And PhoneGap will, takes, will, will you have to use the SDK for the, for the platform that you're building for, but but PhoneGap allows you to, it gives you a very easy way to essentially create a custom locally running browser application that just runs your app. And then you can distribute that however you, um, whatever the way is for the platform. So if it's the iPhone, you're going to put it in, uh, submit it to iTunes Connect or Android Market or, or what have you. So this is extremely cool, um, but it gets even cooler because PhoneGap is a na essentially it's a native app, even though your application code that you really are concerned with was written with JavaScript mostly, PhoneGap allows you access outside of that sandbox that was the limitation we talked about earlier. So you can use JavaScript to get geolocation, that's built into the browser now anyway, um, but you can get accelerometer data, you can get camera data. So you literally write a JavaScript that says navigator.getPicture. Simple JavaScript calls that were, that were created by the PhoneGap guys to allow you to reach outside of that browser sandbox and get at all of the uh, important device features that exist across all of these platforms. So the green means that it's supported and works. Yellow means people are working on it. Red means it doesn't work on that phone. It doesn't exist uh, and it's not going to happen. Uh, but you can see there are a lot of, lots of green on there. In addition to that, uh, there's a plugin architecture. So um, a lot of developers 
who are maybe only concerned with iPhone or maybe only concerned with Android or BlackBerry. They write these plugins that are specific to their platform that you can run alongside that um, give you support for things like uh, push notifications or in-app purchase, that kind of thing. So you, by taking this approach of, of writing the bulk of your application with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you get all the benefits of testing and deployment. Well, not deploying because you're going to go like this. But you can... Um, but all of the benefits of the, you get all the benefits of the web, and if you wrap it in native, and you get outside of the sandbox, and you get all the benefits of native mobile, and then you can deploy it however you want. You could de deploy on the web and through the app stores. So if we think back to these considerations that I'm referring to, and you add phone gap into the mix, it becomes really common uh, to go that route. So in other words, um, many use cases fit into this web plus phone gap approach. So there, you know, I, I wouldn't write a flight simulator game this way, but I would write uh, a Twitter client or I would write uh, RSS reader or on and on and on, banking applications, all sorts of productivity, business apps. Um, so so the, the I'm busy category of mobile apps is well served with this approach and the other, uh, the other approaches um, Maybe not equally so, but very well, very well served. So my advice to people is to, uh, if you can, build your app with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you probably should. So uh, emphasis on if you can. So if you've got the skills to do your app with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and your app can be done in that way, in other words, it's a good fit, then you probably ought to do that. Because even if you don't end up going with it for some reason, You've got this incredibly high fidelity mock-up for native developers to just do pure, pure code uh, it, uh, with a pure code, native code approach. But I think a lot of times once you get done with uh, your HTML version of it, you're just going to go with that because it's really, really powerful. HTML5 gives uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of thanks to HTML5 for this, but um, yeah, it's a good approach. All right, so... You can get more info on all of this. Um, there are links to free, I've written two books on this topic, and you can uh, get them for free, actually, at that link. You can buy them or get them for free. And you can contact me at any time if you have questions about this. We, can have, we, can, we have time for Q&A, yeah? So we can take questions now, or you can contact me later through that contact page. And then uh, I didn't put the web in page up yet, but everything I talked about today, um, any links that I referred to, anything like that, my slides, example files, all that stuff, um, will be available at that, that last link there. So there are some examples that I didn't, um, we didn't really have, we're not going to have time to go through in an hour session, but uh, it would be probably helpful for you to download and take a look at. All right, so if anybody has questions, I'm happy to. Uh, <laughs>